Hi, right, YouTube. I'm going to dissect the LA Times article, the regressive article. On, it's more of a hit piece, I should say, on Donald Trump. And here's, here's how it starts. It was no secret during the campaign that Donald Trump was a narcissist and a demagogue who used fear and dishonesty to appeal to the worst in American voters. The Times called him unprepared and unsuited for the job he was seeking and said his election would be a catastrophe. So then it goes down some of their reasons now. So we're going to dissect the three main reasons that they perceive him as a train wreck. Number one, Trump's shocking lack of respect for those fundamental rules and institutions on which our government is based. Since January 20th, he has repeatedly disparaged and challenged those entities that have threatened his agenda, stoking public distrust of essential institutions in a way that undermines faith in the American democracy. He has questioned the qualifications of judges and the integrity of their decisions, rather than acknowledging that even the president must submit to the rule of law. <laughs> uh, we will get to that soon. He has clashed with his own intelligence agencies, demeaned government workers, and questioned the credibility of the electoral system and the Federal Reserve. He has lashed out at journalists, declaring them enemies of the people rather than defending the importance of a critical, independent, free press. His contempt for the rule of law and the norms of government are palpable. So first, they mention Trump's policies in this article. Do they not realize that when Obama took office, there were many people who had similar fears? How people knew Obama was going to fundamentally change America. His words, not mine. That he was going to fundamentally change healthcare for the worse which people have predicted, which is indeed the case, as you can tell by prices. It should be noted that I voted for Obama in 2008. I fell for his bullshit. But even I now see how biased the media was and how willing they were, they were to him to let him do whatever he wanted. So how about his anti-gun policies and his operation Fast and Furious, which got a border agent named Brian Terry killed? I love how they cite that Trump is breaking up families, yet Obama deported more people than Bush at a quicker pace than Bush. <laughs> He's currently deporting more people than Trump is. And then here we go. Trump's lack of respect for fundamental rules and institutions. <laughs> like when Obama said he doesn't need Congress, he has a phone and a pen. I think the institution of Congress plays a pivotal role in the way in how government functions, but I could be wrong. Or how about when Obama essentially threw law enforcement agencies under the bus by assuming they were wrong regarding hate crimes before investigations were even carried out. The fact is, we trusted police until Obama said we couldn't. Obama ruined the institution of law enforcement. And then, but intelligence services here, I like how the LA Times say that they shouldn't essentially attack intelligence services. Yet, LA Times, among many, many other regressive outlets, attack intelligence services every day over the war in Iraq. So, they also add on to it now that Trump has questioned the integrity of judges, yet Obama questioned the Supreme Court. Trump called, the, called out the Federal Reserve. Good. The Federal Reserve is against everything this country is founded on. Congress has the right to coin money not a private institution that has complete control of our economy. I like how they also say now Trump lashed out at journalists, and he does, okay? I, I won't defend every attack he makes on journalists, but don't we remember that Obama had journalist James Rosen followed and his phone tapped because he didn't like what James Rosen was writing about him? And Obama constantly, constantly criticized Fox News. but. We don't hear about that from the LA Times. Number two, his utter lack of regard for the truth. Whether it is the easily disprovable boast about the size of his inauguration crowd, or his unsubstantiated assertion that Obama bugged Trump Tower, the new president regularly muddies the waters of fact and fiction. It's difficult to know whether he, act he actually can't distinguish the real from the unreal, or whether he intentionally conflates the two to befuddle voters, deflect criticism, and undermine the very idea of objective truth. That's funny, the media preaching objective truth. 
Whatever the explanation, he is encouraging Americans to reject facts, to disrespect science, documents, nonpartisanship, and the mainstream media, and instead to simply take positions on the basis of ideology and preconceived notions. Wow. Wow. This is a recipe for a divided country in which differences grow deeper and rational compromise becomes impossible. Rational compromise becomes impossible. Moving on, number two, <laughs> his utter lack of regard for truth. So, does Trump lie? Yes. Does he sometimes exaggerate the truth? Yes. But Obama didn't? I mean, reporters, all the media, all media institutions knew, they knew that Obama and Hillary were lying about Benghazi. They knew. They knew when they told the family victims of the victims that it was based on a video. They knew this and they claim they didn't. And we remember when Obama lied about learning about Hillary's private email server. He said he found out when the American people did. He told Chris Wallace that during a Fox News interview and he told some person on 60 Minutes who I can't remember or I don't care to remember either way, I just don't remember. Then we find out from documents later released by the FBI that not only did he know about it, he in fact participated in emailing her on her private server. Yeah, way to go Obama. Way to go media for trying to denounce Trump as a raging lunatic liar and Obama as a purist. Number three, his scary willingness to repeat alt-right conspiracy theories, racist memes, and crackpot. Out of the mainstream ideas, again, it is not clear whether he believes them or merely uses them, but to cling to disproven alternate facts, to retweet racists, to make unverifiable or false statements about rigged elections and fraudulent voters, to buy into discredited conspiracy theories first floated on fringe websites and in supermarket tabloids, these are all a piece with the Barack Obama birther claptrap that Trump was peddling years ago and which brought him to political prominence. It is deeply alarming that a president would lend the credibility of his office to ideas that have been rightly rejected by politicians from both major political parties. You know, number three is also pretty, pretty hypocritical and funny. So they want Trump to essentially denounce every single alt-right comment. Well, the First Amendment is freedom of speech. So even if he did, which I will go over shortly, even if he did, denounce a statement, you people would come right back at him and say, oh, so you don't agree that people should have the right to say what they want as long as it doesn't cause any injuries? Trump can't win. And it's not Trump's duty to obliterate the First Amendment from the American vocabulary. It's not his duty to obliterate the Bill of Rights. We, you know, people let Obama's racist pastor preach about communism the whole time Obama's president, no one questioned his integrity and no one questioned Obama's integrity. We should also note now, this is important, that when Trump did denounce anti-Semitism, regressives complained, I have a video on my channel, regressives complained that he didn't do it fast enough. <laughs> so even if he did succumb to the whim to placate the obsessive needs of the mainstream media, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter because you, the media, would then complain that he didn't do it fast enough. Let's, let's break things down. The fact is that the regressive viewpoint is as follows. When you question the leftist ideology, it is because you have hate in your heart. You are a racist. You are a bigot. And all things you do are offensive. But when you question policies on the right, it is because you are a moralist, an altruist, a defender of freedoms. You can unite with them on their beliefs. But if an independent or even a democrat wants to unite with someone on the right, it is because they have been brainwashed into hatred. They have been brainwashed into an ideology that is against social norms. Al Gore fans hate Trump. They completely hate Trump because Trump rolled back Obama's EPA regulations. Well, there are many that believe that those EPA regulations killed businesses. 
Some don't believe that global warming is caused by man-made effects. But the media goes after Trump for that, and Al Gore fans hate Trump for that. So there's two different viewpoints, and it doesn't matter about the difference of opinions. It can only be the left's viewpoint that matters, or else it's because you don't give a shit about the world. You don't care about people's suffering. You don't care about climate change. Al Gore predicted that the world would end in 10 years when he made his film The Inconvenient Truth. And I think that film was in 2005 or 2006. We are now 11 years off, out from that film was made. 11 years, and the Earth is still around. So now, El Gore is making a sequel to his amazing, amazing documentary that got so many people worried. You know, Trump does have problems, okay? He has lied. He has said fake news on occasion. I will give you an example here. He has been tweeting, I think it was last weekend, over the weekend, that the Freedom Caucus is bad because of this, and the Freedom Caucus is bad because of that. And then he recently tweeted that there are no issues between him and the Freedom Caucus. It's fake news. So I will point out when Trump does something I disagree with or when Trump says something that is wrong. And I don't like some of the things he's done. But to call him a radical and think that he is completely insane and his policies will destroy America and destroy the world, even though he is no worse than Obama and he is no worse than some of the presidents that preceded him, is complete lunacy. It's nonsensical, it's hypocritical, and it only points out your own inherent bias and makes you look like an idiot, which, let's face it, most of the media is. And that is why the mainstream media is dying. And that is why Trump will be president in 2020 if they continue with their adolescent behavior. It's that simple. It's that simple, and they keep falling for it. But hey, I guess you live and you learn, unless you're a leftist. And I'm done.